Welcome Husker Nuts. This is Ethan Vice. This is another edition of Four Hours to Lincoln. I got a huge plethora of things to talk about today. Uh, if you like the Huskers, hit that like button. If you want to keep getting updates from my show, smash that subscribe button. Uh, it's free and you get all the Husker Athletics info that you could possibly want. Anyways, guys, huge show today. Got a lot to talk about. I will try to make this as quick as possible as we all have lives. But if you want to know everything about the Huskers and their athletics, uh, this is the show to watch. Let's get started. Uh, this is what's on today's show. I'm going to go through the first three softball games of the season as we started at the Valerta Challenge in Mexico, of all places to be. Uh, we started out the season one and two. I will go over that. Day one recap of the Tyson Invitational that's in Arkansas, uh, and that's for the men and women's track and field team. Uh, great day there. Uh, bowling started at the Flyer Classic, uh, so this is the day one recap of that. Uh, and then yesterday's huge dual win against Michigan, uh, that puts us, I think, six and one in the Big Ten dual uh, slot. And then uh, look into today's Husker activities, which there's a lot of them, and I will go through them. Uh, and also the women's basketball game tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday against Iowa. And speaking of Super Bowl, who are you going for? I uh, personally hope both teams lose. Yes, I am not a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Never have been, never will be. Uh, I am an open Dolphins fan. Laugh all you want, but that's all there is to it. So, uh, anyway, let's get started. Let's talk about softball, their first three games. We started off with Washington in a very disappointing fashion as we lost Jordy Ball two innings into this thing. What Husker luck can you have? I mean, it couldn't have happened to anybody but Nebraska to lose Jordy Ball, which she was looking very, very, very rusty to begin with, allowing her first run in a long time. Uh, I will go over that. So um, we opened the season with an 8-0 and for a uh, five-inning loss. We got run ruled by Washington. Jordy Ball took the loss in her Husker debut, start, starting and going two innings before leaving the game with an injury. Ball was charged with three runs and two hits in her two innings, and she struck out three. Then uh, we put in freshman Caitlin Olinsky, who has had an impressive spring performance, by the way. Uh, was thrust into her collegiate debut following Ball's injury, and Alinsky gave up three runs, which uh, two of which were earned. Sarah Harness pitched the final 1.2 innings and allowed two runs. Um, offensively, Ava Bradwell went two for two, producing Nebraska's lone hits in the game, and Ruby Malin. Uh, Fired a two-hit shutout for Washington. After a scoreless first inning, a hit batter, a stolen base, and a wild pitch gave Washington a runner at third base with no outs in the bottom of the second. The next batter walked and stole second to what to put two Huskers in scoring position before Jaden Glab reached an, on an infield single to plate the game's first run. Nebraska limited the damage to just one run by cutting down a runner at the plate on a fielder's choice and then retiring the next two batters. Uh, Washington uh, hits its first ball out in, of the infield uh, with a leadoff single in the bottom of the third that was followed by a walk and a sacrifice bunt. 
uh, with runners at second and third and one out. Ball was hurt delivering a pitch that went into the backstop, allowing a run to score. Olinsky entered the game for her collegiate debut and gave up an RBI single that made it 3 0 following an error. Glab cleared the bases with a three run homer that put Washington up 6 0. Harness then entered the game and retired the first two batters she faced to end the inning. Uh, then the Huskies added to their lead with a two out and two run double. In the bottom of the fourth inning, that pushed the lead to eight to nothing. Needing a run to extend the game, Malin uh, retired Nebraska in order in the top of the fifth, the only time the Huskers failed to have a base runner in an inning. Uh, so a few game notes in there. Billy Andrews started at shortstop, marking her 160th straight start at the position. Andrews has started every game at short since the first game in the 2021 season. Ava Bradwell went two for two, producing her 16th multi career multi-hit game. Jo uh, Jordy Ball saw her scoreless inning streak, which dated back to last season, uh, snapped at 28.1 innings after she gave up a run in the second inning. Here's a question real quick. <coughs> Was she hurt before uh, the game started? Because, I mean, she clearly looked awful. And I hate to say that about Jordy Ball and her, you know, with this long anticipated debut of Jordy Ball. And she just did not look comfortable out there. And I get it. She's with the new team, of course. Uh, so she's probably lost all comfort level. And that's clearly understandable. Uh, we really thought, you know, with the spring game and, you know, training with the current team she's with, she would build this chemistry and comfort. But she re looked really bad. But before she went down, it looked like she was starting to turn a corner. And it may have been jitters. And uh, I guess we won't know till later in the season when she's fully healthy and back. And that, I think that's the important thing is making sure she's fully healthy. We've got a long ways to go until we start the Big Ten season. And really, that's where it all matters is, you know, I, I say it in every sport. What really matters is what you do in your conference and in the postseason. So, you know, if we can just – uh, win our conference, which I think is easily attainable this year. I will be in good shape, and we can, you know, then from there on out, it won't matter until the postseason. So, uh, just wanted to make a quick note of that, and uh, you know, don't don't give up on this team yet. You know, it's still a long ways to go. People are still trying to get comfortable. Washington and Duke are clearly great teams. You know, already ranked in the top 15. So uh, don't hang your head on the, this team, or don't hang your head on this team just yet. I know it was a frustrating start, you know, seeing Jordy Ball go down, but uh, we're, we're very early in this thing. Um, so she snapped her 28 inning streak. Uh, three players made their first career start for Nebraska, which is Bella Bacon, uh, Jordy Ball. And Samantha Bland. Other players making their Husker debuts included Emerson Cope and Caitlin Olinsky. So that does that for Duke, uh, or excuse me, Washington. We are moving on to Duke. Uh, and give me just a second as I am trying to clear my feet here. Okay, so Jayla Wright. Tossed a one-hitter, two-pitch, uh, number 11 Duke to a 6-1 victory over the 18th-ranked Nebraska softball team in the first of two games Friday at the Puerto Vallarta Challenge. Uh, Wright has retired the first 18 batters she faced, taking a perfect game into the final inning before Billy Andrews produced Nebraska's first run of the season. Uh, with a leadoff home run in the bottom of the seventh, uh, Wright finished the game allowing only one run, uh, or allowing one Husker reach the baseball, striking out eight. 
Uh, and I'll tell you this, the ACC is a powerful conference in the world of softball. Uh, if you look at what they did last year in the, you know, NCAA tournament, uh, impressive conference. I can't remember how many teams they took, but they took quite a bit. And they won a lot of games in that. So Duke, once again, a great team. This is a great test for us, you know. And you know what? I'd rather be battle-tested uh, early on, you know. I'll take those losses early on. Uh, very good, uh, you know, even though we got crushed by, you know, Washington and Duke, you know, it's great to get that experience and it's great to, you know, go ahead and get that bad taste in our mouths, you know, and it, you know, playing the better teams you play early on, the better you're going to get and develop. And it, it really does suck that Jordy Ball didn't really get to experience this. Uh, you know, maybe it'll help with our depth. Uh, so, once again, guys, I'm not worried. I'm not terrified. You know, the, it's beginning of season. So, uh, we can always win the Big Ten. And, you know, that that's an achievement in, in, in itself. So... Uh, don't hang your head on this team just yet. We're early in this thing. So in this game against Duke, Nebraska senior right-hander Caitlin or Kaylin Kinney, who was making her first appearance in the circle in nearly one year, took the loss. Uh, Kinney allowed five runs in five innings against a Duke lineup that ranked 23rd nationally in scoring last year and put up 16 runs in a win over Iowa State earlier Friday. Freshman left-hander Caitlin Olinsky uh, pitched the final two innings and allowed only one run. In the top of the first, Kenny uh, struck out the leadoff batter before issuing a walk and a hit batter. She retired the next hitter, but a two-out, two-run double off the fence and right gave Duke a 2-0 lead. An error and some bad luck contributed to Duke stretching its lead to 3 nothing. In the top of the third, after an error extended the inning, the Blue Devils had the bases loaded with two outs. Kenny then caused a ground ball that Sidney Gray was in position to field, but the ball hit the third base bag and bounced into the outfield for an RBI single. Duke added uh, two more runs in the top of the fourth, two stretches lead 5-0, a leadoff single, a stolen base, and a ground out put a Blue Devil on third base with one out. <clears throat> a fly ball to deep left, then popped out of the glove of the Husker outfielder with the runner on third scoring and the batter advancing to second. A single and a successful squeeze bunt accounted for the second run of the inning. Um, then the Blue Devils made it 6 nothing when Jada Baker greeted Olinsky with a leadoff home run in the top of the fifth. Uh, Billy Andrews broke up the perfect game when she launched a solo home run to uh, left to lead off the bottom of the seventh, but right retired the next three hitters to move Duke to two and one on the season. Um, I will say this. We need more people to step up on that because Billy Andrews, it seems to be the only one uh, in big games, big moments to find any success and as I like Billy Andrews she's great she's a great softball player great offensive player uh, and a great shortstop player as well but we need these ladies to step up in big moments and uh, hopefully this game is a wake-up call the first two games is a wake-up call uh, to help these ladies you know get their bats swinging uh, a few Side notes on this game, senior Kaylin Kinney started the in the circle for the Big Red. It marked her first start since t February 25th of last season as Kinney missed the final three months of the 2023 season due to an injury. Freshman Emerson Cope started as the designated player, making her first career start. Uh, making their season debuts for the Huskers were Alina Felix, Ashley Smetter, and Hayden Werner. 
Billy Andrews hit the Huskers' first home run of the season. The home run was the 44th of her career, six in Nebraska history. So now we move on to Long Beach State. Uh, Brooke Andrews drove in four runs to power the 18th ranked Nebraska softball team to a 17, or excuse me, seven to two victory over Long Beach State. Uh, Brooke uh, finished one for two and a double and four RBIs, while her younger sister, Billy, went three for four with two doubles, a triple, and two runs scored. Uh, Emerson Cope and Sydney Gray added RBI doubles for the Huskers. Nebraska produced its uh, eight hits in the games, including six extra base hits. The win over the 2023 Big West Conference champions gave Nebraska one and two. Who is one and two now? It's first victory of the season after the Huskers lost their first two games, as I mentioned. Uh, Kaylin Kinney, who had an RBI single at the plate, earned the win in relief. Uh, Kinney uh, tossed the final four innings and did not allow a run until surrendering only two hits. Sarah Harness started and gave up two runs in three innings of work. Shannon Haddad took the loss for Long Beach State. Uh, Haddad allowed five runs in two innings. In the top of the first inning, Harness retired the first two batters before issuing a walk, a uh, blue double, two shallow left, then played at the game's first run and gave Beach a 1-0 lead. Uh, Billy Andrews led off the bottom of the first with a triple to right, so then scored Nebraska's first run uh, two batters later on a sacrifice squeeze bunt from her sister, Brooke. Long Beach State regained the lead in, in the top of the third, using a leadoff double, a sacrifice bunt, and an RBI single to take a 2-1 advantage uh, in the bottom of the inning. Caitlin Neal worked a leadoff walk before Billy Andrews doubled to the wall and left, and Ava Bradwell was hit by a pitch to load the bases with no outs. Brooke Andrews then delivered again lining a bases-clearing double to the gap in right center to give Nebraska a 4-2 lead and mark the end of the game for Haddad. Cope greeted the new pitcher with an RBI double down the left line field, left field line, uh, scoring Brooke Andrews and uh, pushing the Husker lead 5-2. Uh, Nebraska added... To its lead with two more runs in the bottom of the fifth, the first two Huskers were retired before Cope drew out uh, drew a two-out walk. Gray followed with an RBI double that scored pinch runner Alina Felix. Kinney then helped herself with the two-out RBI single to right center scoring Gray to give Nebraska a 7-2 lead. Uh, Nebraska wraps up its stay in Mexico with a fourth and final game, uh, 10.30 a.m. today against Utah Valley. So we're looking to go 2-2 two and two, uh, so far this year. Uh, this win yesterday was Nebraska's first win on foreign soil uh, after six other attempts. So we were 0-6 on foreign soil until today. So now we're 1-6. Uh, and the all those other games were at this very challenge, the Puerto Vallarta challenge. So, uh, yeah, we got our first win in this thing. Uh, six of Nebraska's eight hits in the game went for an extra basis. Uh, Brooke Andrews had four RBIs in the game, marking her fourth career game with at least four RBIs. So, improvement there. Billy Andrews went three for four with two doubles and a triple against Long Beach State in two games Friday against 2023 NCAA champ tournament teams. Andrews was four for seven with two doubles, a triple, and a home run. Billy Andrews, three ba extra base hits, tied her career high. Freshman Emerson Cope made her first career start at first base in the game, and classmate Samantha Bland made her first career start in left field. Cope had her first career hit in RBI with an RBI double in the third inning. 
McKinley, Malipka, and Peyton Cody both made their season season debuts with Cody recording a pinch hit single in the sixth inning and her first at uh, her first at bat as a Husker. So uh, disappointing start, but we got a win yesterday, so we're one and two. So good luck today against Utah Valley. Let's make the season even at two and two and let's move on. Uh, so speaking of moving on, we're moving on to track and field. Uh, first day recap of the Tyson Invitational as both men and women are competing. This is a big uh, 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 track meet, you know. You usually got some really quality teams in this thing. So uh, we got two titles, three athletes moving up on the all-time list, and two marks ranking in the top five of the NCAA. So not a bad day. Henry Zimmerman broke the uh, weight throw school record for the fourth time this season, winning the event with a 75-2. That mark puts him at number two in the conference and number four in the NCAA this season. Josh Marcy added an eighth place finish with a personal best distance of 65-11 and a half. Kimmy Garabian and Ariel Emmentort posted fourth and fifth place finishes in the women's weight throw with distances of 64, 11 and a half and 64, eight and a half. Emma Torp's mark improved upon her distance that ranks, uh, oh, I lost it. It ranks ninth all time. Uh, so good job there. Uh, Brian McQuillan secured the 3000 meter titles, uh, shaving eight seconds off her previous personal best. Her uh, 926, 46 moved her up to number six in school history. Allie Bainbridge added a ninth place finish with a personal best of 940.68. Uh, Moore Moore uh, went 23-11 three quarter in the men's uh, long jump, placing fourth in the invitational section of the long jump. Katie and Kurt grabbed sixth with a distance of 24-9 and three quarter. Ashley McElmurray and Darby Thomas claimed eighth and ninth in the long jump with season best marks of 19-6 and three-quarter and 19 uh, even three-quarter. Felicia Williams placed a ninth in the invitational section of the long jump with a leap of 19 and 11. Um, Darius Love punched his ticket to the 60-meter hurdles final, crossing the line at 7.65 in the prelim. His time is the fastest time in the Big Ten this season and the fifth fastest time in the NCAA. And the final bluff placed fifth with a time of 7.75. Johanna Ives moved on to the prelims after posting an 8.44 in the qualifier. In the prelims, Ives placed 12th with a personal record of 8.35, moving up to seventh in school history. In the 60 meters, Thomas ran a personal record of 7.49 to finish 10th in the qualifiers while Jeremiah Smith was Nebraska's top finisher and on the men's side clocking a personal best of 682. Um, Abrielle Artley won her heat of the women's 400 meter, clocking a personal best of 55-10 to place 20th overall out of 15 heats. Nick Bryant was Nebraska's top finisher in the men's 400 meter, placing 25th out of 60 runners by the time of 47-34. The Tyson Invitational continues tomorrow with field events. Well, it continues today, I'm sorry. Uh, field events scheduled for 10.30 and running events beginning at 12.30. Uh, so then uh, moving on to bowling, we went 5-0 and for the day at the Flyer Classic and we are currently in first place. Uh, so that is good news as we're chasing our first tournament victory of the season. Uh, it's I'm, uh, it's very not like the Huskers to not get a tournament victory, let alone not, uh, make noise in the NCAA, um, which we're still ranked and still have a chance. But, yeah, season, season's winding down here, folks. I can't believe winter sports is getting close to the end this year. Uh, it's flying by so quickly. Uh, and speaking of which... Uh, Next week sometime, I have got to give my spring preview. 
we've already started spring sports, but there's just no time to preview them. So hopefully next week I get that done. Uh, even though we're like already in it, uh, crazy stuff. So, uh, yes, we, uh, have a total pinfall of 5,139 in this thing. Uh, and we lead a field of 20 teams. So incredible stuff. Uh, we open play on Friday against the, um, Augustana Vikings, uh, and game one of the, Baker five game total pinfall match. Nebraska created a good lead, topping the Vikings 225 to 202. Um, the Huskers then added an extra two pins to their advantage in game two, 163, 161. Nebraska continued the momentum in the following three games and, and defeated the Vikings 990 to 832. Up next, the Huskers faced uh, number 18, Newman, for their first strength matchup and win of the weekend. Despite a slow start, the Huskers finished the game one on top, 163-142. The Big Red adjusted to the lane changes and managed to tally at 189 in game two. But the Jets took the, uh, the two-pin lead after their... 212 in game three, the Huskers caught fire with a massive 235 in game three against Newman's 169. Newman got a few pins back in game four, but Nebraska used a clean game five to claim the second straight win of the day, 965 to 907. With a two start of the day, Nebraska faced the Carthage Firebirds in game three. The lane conditions continued to become more demanding and Carthage topped Nebraska in game one, 167 and 171. In game two, the Huskers rolled a 265, their highest of the day, and then followed with a 239 to Carthage's 189 in game three to take a 171 pin lead with two games to go. Nebraska extended its lead with 238 and 255 in games four and five and rolled uh to the 1,164 to 854 victory. So a huge win there. Uh, then we uh, faced Dominican in the fourth match of the day. We shot 189, 183 in games one and two to take the early lead. Then in the final three games, Nebraska topped Dominican uh, 241 to 90, 246, 126, and 170 and 120 to earn the fourth win of the day. Uh, 1029 to 660. So we've been having a good day, uh, knowing they were in a uh, for a grind in the final match of the day. The Huskers were prepared to face the Wright State Wolves. Nebraska starts off with a 219 165 lead in game one. The Wolves answered in game two with 224 against the Huskers, 212. Four massive spares would keep Nebraska at only 168 in Game 3, uh, while Wright State shot 183, cutting the Huskers' lead to 27 pins. The Huskers extended the lead after Game 4 to 53 and then sealed a 5 nothing Friday after Game 5 for a 991-910 victory. Uh, then, so we return to action today at 9.25 a.m. for five traditional games. The combined results will seed each team for Sunday's championship bracket to conclude the tournament. Uh, each team will compete in three matches of best four of seven Baker games for final placements and awards uh, for Sunday. So uh, that was probably one of our best days this season. Um, I get there's a lot of tournament left, but uh, th just Friday's uh, activities in the bowling realm, uh, best day so far this season, uh, I do believe, for the Huskers. So uh, great stuff. Let's uh, keep it rolling. Uh, and speaking of rolling, we have rolled Michigan in a massive, huge win uh, in a wrestling duel that was just damn near perfect. Uh, only losing two matches out of the 10. 
Uh, great, great night of wrestling. Let's talk about it. So we started thinking, and I, you know, I was, I'll be honest with you guys, I was super worried about this one, but, uh, you know, I will say nothing beats the atmosphere of senior night uh, for wrestling. We have, it, it's a great atmosphere. We have the raised platform, uh, dark lights, you know, we, all, we have the one uh, dim light. Uh, super intimidating environment. I love it. I wish we could do that every single night we wrestle, but it. I don't know if it's just cost to produce this thing or what, but it's a senior night tradition to have that, you know, to have the race platform and the dark one. And we always have a huge crowd show up for it. Uh, yeah, if we can have that every weekend. Because if you look at Iowa's production, it is super wonderful. I hate saying that. I hate saying that about our rival. But they put on one of the, the best productions in a wrestling duel by far. Uh, you know, you get the flames. They don't have the race platform, but they, they get that place rocking. There's always a massive crowd. If we can match that energy... I think that would do big things. And speaking of wrestling, guys, before I talk about this duel, it looks like uh, the NCAA is trying to instill uh, women's wrestling as a sport. I have been saying this all along. We need to start a t team right now. If we want to get ahead of the game, because uh, Iowa is way ahead of the game, not only at men's wrestling are they succeeding, they're going to have massive success in the women's ranks uh, just because they got ahead early. And, uh, you know, who wouldn't want to go there, you know, that's already got a team established and already knows what they're doing. Nebraska needs to get on this right now. I know we're not – I know we got a lot of massive pro projects going on at the university, but I don't think wrestling's really that costly of a sport – but, you know, that that's just my opinion. I, you know, I do call for Mr. Alberts to look at this thing. And because, you know, if we want to get ahead of bulk, not only for men's, but for women's, but this would also help the men in a big way. You know, if you want to be a big time wrestling school, you got to jump the gun right now. High school automatically has already implemented women's or girls wrestling you know college is on this like hotcakes right now wrestling's growing it it was dwindling down a little bit but it has peaked at popularity and i want to say thanks to mma and uh jujitsu stuff like that that it helps wrestling as well but wrestling is actually making a huge jump in popularity uh uh, schools were losing teams, but now they're trying to get teams back because uh, the popularity and success that it's having, uh, and it's only going to be more competitive, way more different than back in my day when I wrestled in Little League in high school. I didn't make the college ranks, but, uh, you know, it, it has made this huge jump, and um, it, it, it's taken off, you know, so... Mr. Alberts, if you ever happen to watch a show, uh, probably never, but I do call on you to look into women's wrestling. I, if we don't, then we're going to struggle <laughs> to catch up. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But let's talk about that Michigan win, uh, that dual win over Michigan. That was huge. And like I said, I was worried about this one. This one was, uh, they have phenomenal wrestlers, you know, right out of the gate. It, it was just unbelievable to see what I saw. We This was by far our best overall team performance of the season. Uh, and don't forget, Michigan slaughtered Iowa in a massive upset. So if that says anything. Um, so behind six top 10 victories and a major decision, the number five 
Nebraska wrestling team overpowered Michigan 25 to 7 in front of damn near 5,000 fans. So that's a good number. Uh, the third most in Husker wrestling history on Friday night. And I wonder what was the first most because I went to the senior night where we dueled Penn State. Uh, I think that was the COVID year where we were just like a week away from the NCAAs and then they canceled everything because, you know, politics can't keep their hands to themselves. Uh, And that was the year I really thought we had a chance for a national title. I really did. Uh, That was a disappointing end to the year because I knew we had uh, a huge chance to make things happen. I believe we placed second in the Big Ten that year. Uh, I could be wrong. It may have been third, but we had a legit shot at a national title, and I wish I could have that year back, but stupid politics. Okay, so with that... Uh, with the defeat, the Huskers improved to 11 and one on the season and six and one in the conference. Um, while the Wolverines fall to six to four, four and three in the Big Ten. And uh, yesterday, Iowa and Penn State dueled. I when I, before I recorded the show, I was gonna look and see who won that because I started watching it and then I fell asleep because I I was just dog tired. So I. Did not get to see the final results of that, uh, but I, I really think Penn State might have won that. I, I think. Let me just look it up real quick while I have my computer out. This show's raw, everybody. Hold on. Uh, Penn State wrestling. I should have looked this up a long time ago. So yeah, they beat Iowa. Clearly, Penn State's a damn good team, and that's who we duel. Next week, I'm scared for that one because we're at Penn State, uh, and they have five number ones on their roster for one. It just incredible team. Uh, I hate to say that, but they are led by the legendary Kale Sanderson. Uh, what more can you say? What wrestler wouldn't want to go wrestle for Kale Sanderson? You know, um, although Nebraska has kind of peaked in popularity because of Jordan Burroughs, you know, look at Ridge Lovett. He's here because of Jordan Burroughs, uh, you know, a Idaho kid. Uh, but that's for another conversation for another day. Uh, let's get back to this duel with the, uh, I talked about us being six and one big 10. Uh, and wow, uh, Michigan actually for, fell to four and three in the big 10, but you know what? I, I feel like Michigan's a better team than what their record indicates. Clearly, this just shows how competitive Big Ten is in wrestling. It is the toughest conference uh, for any sport. Uh, Just massive, uh, massive, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a massive showing of athleticism at its best. Uh, ranked match opened the duel against Michigan with Caleb Smith taking on num- uh, number six, Michael D'Agostano. I was worried about the- Michael D'Agostano, the caveman. Uh, he is a badass wrestler. And I I was like, oh shit, here we go. We're going to... No. Caleb Smith, uh, or D'Agostano, so he earned a takedown late in the first period. But Smith quickly escaped, and escape for D'Agostano in period two brought the uh, score to 4-1, uh, entering the third. Smith opened period three with a quick reversal and four near fall points to take the lead and secure the 8-5 decision. That was huge. Uh, at 133, uh, Jacob Van Dieb with his second big upset this season. Uh, wrestled Dylan Raggison, number four in the country, ladies and gentlemen. After a scoreless first period, Van D recorded an escape and a one-point penalty for Raggison's locked hands. That was a huge moment in the match, was that locked hands. After starting period three on the bottom, Raggison got a reversal to even the score at two and two. With the four seconds left on the clock, Van D managed an escape. He used a Granby roll to get out. 
uh, and took a 3-2 win, his first over top five opponent in his career. And uh, yeah, that Granby roll, ladies and gentlemen, it was my go-to when I wrestled. Effective move, but you have to hit it right, and he did. He did it beautifully. He did it perfectly. Awesome stuff. Uh, with the Huskers leading 6-0, number 7, Brock Hardy, took the mat against number 10, Sergio Lindley. Lindley upset uh, Real Woods last time out, if you all remembered. Huge upset there. And Lindley is definitely an up-and-comer, but not tonight after Brock Hardy got a win. Uh, after an action-filled first two periods, Lindley, Lindley held an 8-6 lead entering period 3. Hardy battled back with a couple of takedowns to end up with his fourth consecutive win, uh, 13-9. Then we're at 149. Who else? Ridge Lovett. He faced number six, Austin Gomez. Lovett came out hot with seven points in period one. And let me tell you this, Austin Gomez, okay, he started out 5-0. He came back from an injury, I do believe. Terrific wrestler, All-American uh this was definitely Ridge's toughest test of the uh, season. And he took care of business right away. Uh, but yes, uh, seven points in period one after choosing to start on top in period two. Love it. Tacked on another two points with a near fall and clocked over four minutes of riding time. A takedown for Gomez in period three wasn't enough for as Love it took the 11 4 decision and the fourth straight top 10 win. For the Huskers for the evening. Um, then Peyton Robb, he comes back. I was worried about this one because he had a massive showdown with Will Luan, ranked 10 in country. Will Luan is an All American, uh, just a terrific wrestler, one of Michigan's premier wrestlers. Even though he is only seated or ranked number 10, he still, you know, has the capability of making a run to the finals this year. Uh, uh, an escape for Luan and a stall point awarded to Rob marked the only points entering period three. After an escape for Rob, he was able to hold on for the 2 1 victory, extending a Husker lead to 15 0. The refs took a long look at that, uh, but uh, Luan had no control, and th that gave us a big. Grits and guts by Peyton Robb to win that match. Uh, and he needed that match. As you all know, he has been struggling mentally. Uh, the last few matches he has wrestled. Uh, so he takes this win. Uh, I wouldn't call him upset because Peyton Robb... It, when Peyton Robb's at his finest, he is a national qualifier for sure. He is a... Uh, uh, finals caliber wrestler when he's at his finest. So he's ranked number seven right now. You know, if if he can get to his finest, we can see another finalist in the NCAAs, possibly a Big Ten champion as well, um, along with uh, Rich Lovett. Uh, after a brief intermission and five straight ranked victories, uh, we had Antrell Taylor, who's ranked 16th in the nation, take on Cameron Amin, another premier Michigan wrestler. Uh, after a scoreless first period, Taylor elected to start on bottom in period two and was awarded an escape to take the 1-0 lead. Amin retaliated with an escape of his own to even the score 1-1 in period three. With a score still tied at the end of regulation time and the first sudden victory over time, the two entered the tiebreakers. They each scored an escape point, but Taylor secured the writing time point in the 3-2 decision. So good stuff by Taylor. Uh, he's an up-and-comer freshman as well, who I believe will make some good... We really got a loaded team here. And um, some freshmen that's about to blow things up, you know. May not see it this year, but in the coming years, you're going to see how good this team is. It's unbelievable. Um, at 174, Bubba Wilson, uh, first loss of the night, uh, took on number three, Shane Griffith. Uh, so it's not a bad loss. You know, Bubba Wilson's had some tough bouts. 
uh, Griffith order, uh, recorded the first point with an escape in period two. Both wrestled hard in the third period, but no points were awarded, giving Griffith the 1-0 victory and putting the first points on the board for Michigan. Uh, tough, tough day for uh, Bubba, for sure. Uh, can't hang your head on that loss. Um, you know, he Bubba's starting to turn the corner. He just happened to wrestle a very, very good Shane Griffith. Uh, who is clearly a uh, contender for a title this year as well. Uh, so not not a bad loss for Bubba, you know, who, who's on the cusp. He's ranked 33rd right now, but if the tournament started today, uh, he would ba basically be in the pigtails to get in the tournament. Uh, he's having that rough a year, but hopefully – Things start to turn around. He, he's been wrestling really well these last bit, but he just happened to have a really tough one today, so or yesterday. So uh, nothing to hang your head on. Uh, with the Huskers still leading 18-3 in the match, we get Lenny Pinto, who, man, he's just getting more and more exciting to watch. Uh, he wrestled Jaden Bullock, who's ranked number 18. A pair of takedowns in period one gave Pinto a quick 6-2 lead. After tacking on another takedown second period, Pinto led Bullock off and secured the 10-4 uh, victory in the final bout of the... Or, sorry, I skipped Silas Allred. So, Allred went up against Bobby uh, Strigo, the first uh, ranked versus unranked match of the night, uh, with Silas being ranked number 13. Uh, at 197, All Red started with a takedown in the first period. Strigo came back with an escape in period two, but was met with another takedown from All Red. After another pair of takedowns in the third, All Red notched the first major decision of the match, winning 14-2. So then we entered the final bout of the night, Nash Hutmacher. For some reason, I just don't know why we aren't going with Harley. I guess I never will know. After I believe Harley has been turning the corner, you know, we're, we're sticking with Nash, which is fun. You know, I guess it's a popularity thing. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but he, he takes on number six, Lucas Davidson. And I just knew it. I, I called it from the get go. Nash was going to get gassed. And that's exactly what happened after a scoreless first period. So he kept the first period interesting. Uh, Davison struck first with an escape and a takedown in the second. After another takedown period three, Davison earned the 8-0 win, the major decision win. Uh, so that gave help give Michigan the seven points that they earned for the night. Uh, but great duel uh, and a lot of close matches that went our way. So terrific stuff there. That was a much needed win. Uh, yeah, it just just massive. Uh, I was I really legitimately was worried about this one, but somehow we took care of business. Mark Manning, being the great coach that he is, should be very proud of himself. So the Huskers wrestling team will take on Penn State next week and then Arizona State to close the season. Two tough duels to end the year. Uh, and, guys, I hate to say it, uh, and I hope I'm wrong, but there's no stopping Penn State. Uh, th this is one of the best wrestling teams I have ever seen. Uh, and it, it's not even close. The Penn State is... D95 Huskers of the season, uh, wrestling season. It's a, uh, they're, they're tough. Uh, led by Aaron Brooks and uh, Carter Storacci. That just a massive team. And they do nothing but reload. And it really sucks just because, uh, you know, but <laughs> this, the, the best that any other team can do is second because Penn State is clearly the epitome of wrestling. And, I mean, they're, they're basically the new Oklahoma State. 
I, there's just no stopping them. I hate to say it, but that's just how it is. And, you know, that's the one thing I don't like about college wrestling is the, you don't have variety winners. You either have Oklahoma State, Iowa, or Penn State. Uh, and on occasion, you'll have an Arizona State or a Michigan. But it... You know, it's always ran by a decades-long win streak. You know, it's just insane like that. Um, but hopefully, I don't know, it all does start with a giant killer. It starts with the team that says, okay, you know what, we can't have this, you know. And and that shows the mental state of wrestling. It's a mental state. It's a mental sport. You go up against a Penn State wrestler and your mind is like, oh shit, I'm in for a showdown. Uh, that's all there is to it, you know. Uh, you just have to have the better mindset than the other guy ahead of you. But you have to do that for all 10 wrestlers. So, you know, it it, it is a tough mental sport, you know. Oklahoma State achieved that about 40 times. You know, Penn State's achieving that about 15 now it it's just uh it, that's just how the sport goes i uh, i see it in high school wrestling i see it in all levels of wrestling so uh that it, that's kind of what makes it fascinating too so um but yeah we, we're already closing in on the season uh yeah, I am so ready for the NCAA. I took work off to watch this thing. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be there because it's so damn expensive. Um, but uh, I guess I'll watch it from the comfort of my own home. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it does suck. To, you know, it's in my backyard. It's in Kansas City. It's only a two-hour drive over there. The only thing stopping me is the price of admission. $850 for all three days is very ridiculous for me. I would maybe, maybe pay $200. But $800, you, you got to be shitting me. If, if, give me the shittiest seats for $200 bucks for all three days. But I ain't paying $50 for one day. I ain't going there for one freaking session. Screw that. What's the point? You know? Uh, so, NCAA, you should kind of be... No other wrestling tournament is that damn expensive. I mean, some can be... But 850 freaking... Now, I get your, you know, one $1,500 exclusive, you know, pack, whatever. I, I get that. But, you know, just to go in and watch from a shitty seat, $850 for all three days. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Not unless somebody helped me out. <laughs> but uh, I doubt that'll happen either. Uh, I can only dream. Uh, so that takes care of all, all of Friday's uh, events. A look into today. Uh, hopefully this video uploads before any of this action starts. I highly doubt it, but let's talk about it. So women's tennis will take on North Dakota and Montana. Um, after Sunday's 6-1 victory over Illinois State, the Nebraska's women's tennis team welcomes North Dakota and Montana on uh, today. The Huskers will face North Dakota at 9 a.m. and Montana at 5 p.m. Uh, yada yada yada. So here's about North Dakota. The Fighting Hawks went 11 13 uh, last season and posted a 5 2 mark in the Missouri Valley Conference. North Dakota is led by former Nebraska assistant coach Tom Boysen. Uh, for 2022 23 in singles play, North Dakota is led by freshman Jules Schultz with a 6 5 record and doubles pair of Andre Jessen. Sapir Sela impressed with a 7-3 mark at the number one spot. Nebraska welcomes the Fighting Hawks for the first time since 2017. 
The Huskers lead the all-time series with North Dakota 4-0. Uh, now about Montana, the season marks head coach Steve Asher's 14th season at Montana. Asher has been named the Big Sky Coach of the Year in both 2012 and 2014. In the 2022-2023 season, the Grizzlies were led by fifth-year Maria Coheen, who was 9-7 singles matches and doubles pair of Lauren Dunlap and Rosie Sturt finished with a 13-6 record last season. Montana's record consists of fifth years Olivia Oosterbon and Maria Goheen, senior Avila Mitogova, seniors Rosie Stark and Grace Haugen, sophomore uh, Shavika Agrawal, and I'm butchering these tennis names. Tennis names are so damn hard. Okay. Uh, so you got Shavika Argawal and Haley Murphy and freshman Kelsey Phillips. Uh, Nebraska has played Montana twice in school history and leads 2-0 all time. Uh, so here's some notes. Doubles pair Anna Zamburek and Enfisa Danochenko are ranked number 25 in the nation. The duo holds 7-1 and one record after defeating Harvard at the number two spot. The Huskers have nine straight home matches coming up before they hit the road to face Minnesota on Friday, March 29th. Uh, then today, uh, we're entering day two of the track and field meet. Softball taking on Utah Valley. Uh, then later on today, men's gymnastics at Michigan, uh, traveling to Ann Arbor where they take them, take them on. Top five matchup. We look to maintain a winning streak after beating Penn State at home. Uh, that's at noon today. Uh, the Wolverines ranked number two in the NCAA following their first loss of the season against number four, Illinois. Uh, gymnasts Fred Richard and Javier Alfonso underlines the Wolverines' strength with Richard coming off his second consecutive Big Ten Specialist of the Week accolade, and Alfonso leading the NCAA on steel rings with a 14 7 6 7 3 score average. So good luck to uh, the men's gymnastics team. So men's tennis will take on Arkansas. Uh, we are 5 and 2 so far. Arkansas is 4 and 2. Uh, and, and tomorrow we play Gonzaga as well. So I'll preview Gonzaga as well. Um, so starting with Arkansas, which is today's matchup. They have gone 4-2 to start the 2024 season with losses to Middle Tennessee State and Memphis, who's ranked number 25. Uh, Arkansas enters the 20, uh, ended last season ranked number 75, and senior Melvin Manuel was recently ranked number 10, or no, sorry, 107 by the ITA. Head coach Jay Udwadia and is in his second season with the Razorbacks and in his 19th as a collegiate coach. As head coach of OSU, the team reached as high as number four in the national rankings. Series history, we're all in five against Arkansas. So we're looking for our very first ever win against the Razorbacks, hopefully. Uh, so now tomorrow we play Gonzaga. The Bulldogs have gone 2-0 to start the 2024, to start 2024 and will be taking on Omaha on February 10th prior to competing in Lincoln. Uh, they ended the last season ranked number 69 by the ITA. Head coach DJ Gural is in his third season with the men's tennis team after coaching the women's team for 17 years. Uh, we So this is the very first matchup against the Bulldogs. So uh, quite intriguing to say the least. Junior Anton Shep was recently ranked by the, our Ant and Shep. So here's a few side few side notes here. Ant and Shep recently ranked by the ITA at one, number 113 with this 8 and 3 record and upset win over Alabama's number 51 Enzo Aguillard. Uh, the last Husker to be nationally ranked in singles was Roni Hiteranta, reaching number 75 in the in last season. The Huskers also started spring season with two straight Big Ten honors, 
Shep was named Big Ten Player of the Week on January 17th, and Kelvin Mueller on the 24th. Uh, both Shep and Mueller were recognized for their perfect 4-0 and weeks in straight set victories. And I am running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. I'll try to wrap this up. Uh, Nebraska has a 5-2 and two record so far on the last uh, this season. The best start for the team since 2018. The Big Red are coming off a uh, tough 0-7 loss against Baylor, uh, where the four Huskers took their first singles losses of the season. So now we're moving on to women's gymnastics. Uh, two teams have met. Uh, we're... Uh, facing off against Maryland, met 22 times total with the Huskers owning a 16-5 and one lead in the series. And last season's face-off, we defeated the Terps by a score of 196-275 to 195-9. Uh, coming off a win against Iowa, the last time out, uh, then Maryland is two and two on the season, is currently ranked number 28 in the. Road to the Nationals poll. The Terps average uh, 196.006 uh, team score, with their highest being 196.450 against Rutgers. They have earned wins against Westchester and Rutgers and have lost to number 15 Ohio State and number 16 Minnesota. Maryland is led by Natalie Martin and Emma Silverman. So good luck, ladies. Uh, then to uh, finish the day off, men's basketball will take on Michigan. Uh, we return home after a very tough two-game road stand. Uh, to say the least, it was, it was very difficult. And uh, I no doubt believe we'll get the win today uh, to make things right and turn this thing around. Um and I do believe eight games left. So, uh, and we're still in good shape for the NCAAs. May not get a high seed like we want, but I no doubt still believe we will get that first tournament victory this year. I still believe it. Uh, have faith, uh, Husker Nation. Just have some faith. Uh, and I will make this show very interesting if you even made it this far in this episode. If we don't win that uh, first victory, I will eat a hot chip. How about that? I will eat something spicy and try to do a show with that. So let's make this interesting. Maybe I'll get some views after that. We'll see. Um, here we go. Uh, so, yes, we had our losses against Illinois Northwestern, uh, which was... Uh, very difficult to deal with. The Huskers outshot the Wildcats. So that, that, you know, that was a very difficult game to lose. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, let's talk about Michigan just real quick. They, they aren't having a very good season, to say the least, but they did get a huge win over Wisconsin somehow, uh, which kind of sucks to know they can – beat a Wisconsin, so that doesn't really make it special for us. Uh, they come in the game with an 8-15 and 15 record uh, following their win over Wisconsin. The Wolverines snapped a five-game losing streak with a win over the Badgers. They also have Big Ten wins at Iowa and over Ohio State, so they get a win at Iowa. We go to Iowa and get blown out, so basketball's so weird, guys. Uh while posting a win over St. John's in non-conference action. Uh, Michigan is led by fifth-year head coach Juwan Howard. You all know him. Michigan fans want him gone. Uh, what what can you say? But after beating Wisconsin, do you really want him gone now? I, I don't know. Uh, two NCAA tournaments and an NIT bid in his first four seasons. Uh, he started at... And, of course, you all remember he starred at Michigan uh, during the Fab Five era. Uh, I was pretty young then. Spent 19 seasons in the NBA playing uh, in for eight franchises and won two NBA titles with the Miami Heat in 2012-2013. Uh, he worked in the Miami Heat organization for six seasons, the Final Five as an assistant coach before returning to his alma mater in 2019, uh, Tennessee transfer all, 
Olivier Nikahua uh, averages 15 and a half points and a team high of seven rebounds per game, while Terrence Williams, the third, is at 13 points per game and shoots 39% from the three point range. As a team, Michigan shoots 46%. As a team in nearly 37% from three-point range, Michigan will be without leading scorer Doug McDaniel. For today's game, McDaniel averages a team high of 17 points per game, four and a half assists per game, and a second on the team with 41 three-pointers. So that's a huge loss for Michigan. Big game for us. Uh, series history, Michigan leads this thing 22-3 against us. Uh, so the series record is not even close. Hopefully it's uh, 22 and four today. So uh, let's get to it. All right. So Sunday, as I mentioned, we take on Gonzaga uh, for men's tennis, uh, women's basketball taken on Iowa uh, Super Bowl Sunday. I'm not going to get too in-depth with this. I'm running out of time. But as you all know, Caitlin Clark is a phenom right now for Iowa. I want to do nothing but to make her cry. Uh, the way this women's season has gone on, uh, here's our chance. We're at home. We're, we always play good at home. Uh, let's do it. Let's make Caitlin Clark cry. Let's... As much as I don't like her, and nobody likes her, uh, she is a phenomenal player, to say the least. She shoots like a man, you know. Most women, you know, they take their time setting their feet and make this. Caitlin Clark can actually shoot, and she plays like a man. I'm not saying she is a man. I'm just saying she plays like a man. And that's what makes her so phenomenal. But let's make her cry today. Let's take our shots and just... If we can do anything amazing this season, this would be it. Make Caitlin Clark cry. Make her flop. Make her, you know, take a loss against us. Uh, that's, man, if I could wish for anything. Let's do that. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I'm not going to get too in-depth. We already lost Iowa earlier this season. We already know about them. We know they have a phenomenal team. Uh what more can I say about that than that? And then, of course, we got the Super Bowl tomorrow. I hope both teams lose. I'm not a big Chiefs fan. Uh, so you got the Chiefs, and then you got California. I will not root on California for any freaking thing. Then you got the Chiefs. That Here's the story. This is why I don't like Chiefs, ladies and gentlemen. I will clearly show I grew up in Kansas, and everybody's a damn Chiefs fan. And, you know, I I have family that's Chiefs fans, so I'm not saying they're all assholes. But if you disagree with something that ain't in the Chiefs kingdom, you know, oh, my God, you're a terrible person. You suck. You're shitty. I, I can't deal with it. I, you know, I know a lot of Husker fans are Chiefs fans, and that's fine. I don't care. But, you know, if... But people outside of the Husker fan base that are Chiefs fans, they're rotten. I mean, they, they really are. They, they don't really follow the epitome like Husker fans do, where we cheer on our opponent, opponents, like we, you know, clap for them, you know. We're, we're respectful in most cases, you know, besides the one time we booed that Wisconsin player from Omaha but, uh, you know, for most part, we are a respectful fan base. And, you know, and I like that. Chiefs fans are not, you know. So you got the Chiefs fans from Kansas that only cheer on KU. Uh, they're, they're the worst. Then you got, you know, Husker fans that are Chiefs fans. Cool people. Uh, you know, it, it's a mixed fandom, I guess you can say. And... You know, I, I always made Miami, the Dolphins, my team. For one, because uh, we're always the damn underdog. Cool colors, far away from Kansas City. Uh, and, you know, 
what more can I say? You know, what other mascot has a dolphin? So that's why I always chose the dolphins, uh, you know, but it is what it is. I don't really get too worked up about the NFL, to be honest. I really don't. Uh, especially nowadays with Roger Goodell running it. That guy needs fired. He is a crook. He, and he is a terrible uh, businessman. Uh, and, make, and with all this woke movement and stuff, I just cannot get behind it. I'm not a fan. It started with the targeting rules then it starts with you know separating national anthems i i'm not for that i am not ladies and gentlemen uh i try not to make this show political uh but that that explains why i'm a dolphins fan and i'm openly but i don't get too worked up about the nfl i don't take it that damn serious to be honest uh i do however like to follow former Huskers, uh, and their achievements in the NFL. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I know this was a long show. I really didn't intend it to be this long, but there's a lot to go over. Uh, next week, I will not be on here as much. I will try to give a spring preview. I have in-laws coming over, which means, as you all know, there could be house projects. And I work on top of that. So, uh... It couldn't have come at a better time, though, as we don't really have a whole lot going on. We only have something on Wednesday, and then we have the weekend. So, uh, perfect timing for that, to say the least. I, I think that's uh, actually a good time for that. So, house project. So, I don't know. It could be Monday, Tuesday. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, but if you hit that subscribe button, then you'll know. So, I try to jam everything in as I can. So I don't have to, uh, you know, backtrack. So with that, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy this show. Please subscribe. Uh, and always remember to be excellent to each other. Go Big Red.